Hey guys, John here, diving deeper into this session that we did yesterday. This one is going to be the pulse bass that kind of plays around with the kick drum. So it's one of those things that you kind of notice once you're looking for it, but if you don't really notice it, it just kind of sounds natural. That is, unless it's taken away, then something sounds a little bit odd. So this one is called pulse bass, not necessarily because we have a square wave or a pulse wave going on, but it's more so derived from the fact that this sound is gonna be a pulsing bass that plays along with the kick drum. So with that being said, it's really here in the beginning that it shines. Everywhere else, it's kind of just there to fill space and kind of fill some low end. So in the beginning here, we, we hear this drum pattern coming in. And then we also have this pulse bass that's playing in between the kick drum. And now that's a very important sound to kind of accentuate that rhythmic feeling. So take a listen to this and you'll see what I mean. Now we're really listening to this here. Now with a kick drum and a hi-hat and this, it already sounds pretty decent, like we can build stuff on top of that. Now notice once I take this away, it almost sounds like very dry, basic mix that you just started like right now, right? So take a listen without the pulse bass. It's extremely underwhelming. It's like, okay, we have a kick drum, we have a hi-hat, but it's just not interesting. It's boring. I'm already bored, like within a bar of listening to that. But we have the pulse bass in there, and then we kind of realize that something might be coming. We have this rhythmic feeling. Oh, like something's about to happen. There's going to be more stuff introduced, like this mech death down here that we're going to talk about soon. So that's kind of the concept behind the, that's like the theory side behind this pulse bass here. Just adding a couple of those components with the kick, the snare, or the kick, the hi-hat, and this pulse bass, it almost seems like we were really building something. So with that being said, let's kind of dive into this patch and see what it takes to create it. And a little spoiler alert, it's actually very simple. So what we really want is this kind of low end, quick in and out thing that has a little bit of space, and then that's it. It wants to live between the kick drums, and when the kick drum's playing, we don't really want it there, because that's just gonna clutter stuff. Our kick's holding down our low end, holding down that rhythm on the one and the uh, and the three. Well, technically one, two, three, four in this case, but you know what I mean. Okay, so let's dive into this thing here. So this is the pulse bass. So we have this utility engine that we're not using. Sometimes this defaults by on, so don't worry about that. Engine two, nope, we're not using that. Just using engine one. And surprise, we're using only one oscillator. So just one sound wave. So it's pretty simplistic as far as the sound generation goes. Now, moving on from here, this voices, we're gonna have two voices of unison, and that's because this is a mono type of thing, and we're kind of breaking a little bit of rules, kind of stereoizing a low end kind of feeling. But if we had it just on one voice, it feels a little too small and a little bit too narrow, but as soon as we increase this to two, take a listen to how that changes this. Now we almost feel like that second voice is really kind of bringing the sound to life, making it a little bit bigger than it should be, which is great, which is what we need. But keep in mind, we do want to keep the detune very low for this, because the more we detune this, it's gonna de just detune low end, and it's just gonna sound nasty with everything else in the mix. So with that being said, this detune is 0.062%. Now for this, let's turn up some of our effects in here, just the dry stuff. So not bad, the effects add a little bit of uh, pizzazz to it, which will go on a little bit later. This filter routing is going to be very important, however. This multi-mode, so first this, this engine, as we see filter one, goes to this first filter. Now we're on the default multi-mode because that's really what we need, and uh, we can change different filters if we like to, but this multi-mode multi gets the job done. So this cutoff is gonna be at 629 hertz and the resonance at 0.136. Now the whole point about this is really to cut off that top end that we don't really need because we're looking for a low end kind of rumbly sound. So we really don't need any of that extra higher end frequency stuff because if we do add that, then that's gonna interfere with other stuff that we add later on in the, in the track. So make sure to cut that out because we don't really need it. We need space for other things. So if we put this all the way to the top, it's a cool sound, sure, but like I said before, it's gonna get in the way with other things and it's gonna be competing with too much stuff in the mix. So let's undo that back to where it was at 629 hertz. So now what's happening is this filter, once it gets outputted, once it gets processed here, is gonna be going into the second filter. And we know that because here on the sum, on this filter routing, we see filter one is going to filter number two. We're like, okay, got that. 
So now we go to filter number two, and what we're using here is the MS-20, and we're using a high pass. And like in the video before, it sounds kind of contradictory to use a high pass to get more low end, but that's exactly what we're doing. You see this little bump right here, and that's due to this resonance dominant. It sounds great in this MS-20 filter. So the cutoff is gonna be at 37.1 hertz. So we're not really using this to, to remove a lot of the lower end stuff. We're using this to accentuate this little spot here. And you might think we could, we could do this with the EQ. Sure, we could. But this filter sounds really great. And once you get it at the right spot, it really has that nice vibe to it. So take a listen without the second filter and notice how different it is. How different it is. It really doesn't sound low end at all, even though we did drop it down an octave, which I should have mentioned before. But yes, uh, this is down one octave, but it doesn't really have that low end feeling to it. It's only when we add the second filter that it really comes alive. So like I said, it might sound strange, but if you want some more low end, sometimes you can use, high, use a high pass, find the right cutoff and increase the resonance to the right spot to kind of sweep around where you think it sounds right and you will get a result like that. So that's really the organic way, the bare bones, one oscillator, two voices, drop it down an octave using a saw wave and then running it through two filters. The first one cutting off the, uh, the top end and then the second one to really boost that low end with a high pass. So now we get into the, um, before we get into effects, we should talk about the envelope a little bit here. The attack is one millisecond to DK101, sustain all the way at the top and the release at 20. Now you can change and remove the uh, sustain, the decay time, but we're just using quick little pulses as we play it. So it kind of works out fine. Now for the effects, let's go over here and turn this on. So what is happening here? We have some tape echo, a little bit of delay to kind of fill out the space a little bit, reverb as well, and then we're gonna distort the crap out of it. So let's turn these off here and let's kind of see the signal change. So as we had before, it's this is dry. Which would work totally fine. You can totally even keep it like that. But a little bit of tape echo is kind of nice at a very low value. It's six percent here. The time is at one over eight. Fine in the middle. Input volume also in the middle. Intensity 0 0.350, and the stereo sped all the way to the top at 0.2. So take a listen to the difference here. So here's off. Oops. Here's off. And on. So it kind of gives it a little bit something after it. And it doesn't stick around very long. It's not too noticeable at a low percentage, but it's those tiny little screws that kind of really accentuate patches like this. And then we're here, we're going to be breaking another rule. The first one, and not to really stereoize a, a low end sound like this, but also don't really put reverb on stuff. But sometimes you do want to break these rules because it can sound a little bit better. So here's dry with no reverb. And now with reverb. Now again, this is a low vol or a low volume or low dry wet at percentage at nine, so it's a little bit of, a little bit of reverb, but it kind of just opens it up just a little bit, not too much. And then as we look down here at the high pass, it's cutting cut off at 200 hertz, so a lot of that stuff below it is not really getting reverberated. This is just a little small spot of the sound that gets a little bit of extra reverb. Now for the uh, settings here, the pre-delay is 20 milliseconds, size one, decay 0.334, stereo width 0.5, high pass, like I said, 200, and then low pass 15K, which I believe is default, and the dampening is at 0.6. So that's pretty much this module here. Now comes the distortion. So here's without distortion and then with. So that was another sound that you just heard there, which we'll go over a little bit later. But uh, yeah, this distortion is kind of just there to give it a little bit more harmonic content, kind of make, make it a little bit more noticeable, make it a little bit more interesting. It's one of those things that you can keep if you'd like to, but you don't necessarily need to. It's just a little bit more uh, contour, different timbre to the sound here. So without it, with it. So what's going on here, we're using the tape. One of my actual personal favorite algorithms here, I think this one actually sounds really good. If you're doing any kind of low end stuff and you want some little more content to it and it doesn't really sound like it's distorted per se, but more saturated, this algorithm sounds pretty cool. Now the dry wet's gonna be 36% and the dry is gonna be 24.7 dB. And that's basically all you have to do for this patch here. This one doesn't come with any macros because there's not really anything I felt that really needed a macro. 
this sound is kind of more so you, it's kind of a set it and forget it kind of thing. Maybe you want to go in and tweak a little things a little bit later to your liking, to your track to kind of sculpt it a little bit more. But as far as macros go, you're not really going to be piloting this patch too much. It's kind of more a foundational type of patch as, as opposed to like a lead or something like the uh, 303 that we made. So a relatively easy patch to make, but a very important one as well, because if we take this away, it just, it's underwhelming. Like I said, I'm already bored before it hits the second bar. But then now, I'm like, okay, something's coming. There's the mech base, or the mech death, I guess we, we, we called it here, which we will go over in another video. But just to drive the point home, this kind of pulse stuff is something that you need. But be careful. Here's a kind of another thing that you want to watch out for. Once you have a lot of stuff in your mix, this can get a little interfering. So maybe you might want to do maybe some side chaining to something else or maybe bring the volume down a little bit. Maybe EQ some certain spots out to kind of fit it more in the mix. Just throwing that out there because if you have this too loud, it's going to start to interfere with your mix and it's going to sound cluttery and just not really as a foundation. The foundation is going to take over your whole house, which no, we don't really want to have in our track. So with that being said, this is the Pulse Base, and you can always get this patch for free in the video description below. And yeah, thanks for watching. We're going to play this out a little bit here with the uh, Pulse Base here. Enjoy. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.